Welcome to Creative Tian channel. Today I have a video showing you the vintage sewing machine cabinet, how to install your vintage sewing machine onto the cabinet or take it off the cabinet. Here is a sewing machine cabinet I found from a thrift store. I always want a real antique sewing machine cabinet for my vintage Singer 201 sewing machine. So I'm really happy to find this cabinet in a thrift store for about $10. And this is how it opens. One side is projected and the other side is recessed, so they fit perfectly. One side of the leaf falls down all the way, and the other side, there's a metal support behind. I heard this piece should automatically come out when I open the flap, but I think this machine is too old, so it doesn't really come out automatically but I can push and pull easily. I already installed the machine, but I can show you how I take it off and install it back. And this is the part that you can open. And there's a little drawer in the front. So you can put accessories. I believe this is a spring for that metal piece on the left side. So I have to figure out a way to put it back. So I heard this style is called the Queen Anne. This is one of the very popular singer sewing machine cabinet. I think it's called the number 40. And I'm always intrigued by how the machine mount to the cabinet or how to take it off. I did some research and I find an easy way to do it. First, you want to make sure the machine and the cabinet matches because different machine or different manufacturer might have different dimensions. And the most important part is these two pieces here. That's the two metal pieces with a round shape. And if your cabinet doesn't have this piece, you can always buy it from eBay. I've seen a lot of this for sale on eBay. So that's what it looks like when it's in the cabinet. And when you pull it off, and place the front piece down. And now you can place your machine with the edge on top of this piece of wood. So now you can do your sewing. It's very sturdy and very practical. And there's an empty spot here. There's supposed to be another black metal piece with a hole so you can place your wires, go through the hole, and then you can have a knee operating mechanism. You'll be connected to a long piece of metal bar and you can use your knee to press and that will operate the machine. So instead of pressing with your foot, you can use the knee press or knee control to sew. But I'm missing this part and I don't have any knee control pieces inside the cabinet. So I will leave it for now. For now, I can still place my wire connection here and place my foot pedal down below. Now I'm going to show you how to remove the machine from the cabinet and uh, place it back. And basically it's only connected to the two points behind the machine. That's this one and this one. And you'll need a flat head screwdriver. And that's the underside of the machine. And you can see here is attached to this piece and there's a screw, you can unscrew it halfway and the same on the right side. So you can loosen it and then you can just lift up the whole machine. And it's easier to have this piece open up so you have more room here.
that's how you lift up the machine. And you can see this piece that's holding the machine. To install the machine back to the cabinet, here is a little trick I learned. And uh, you can just lift up these two pieces. To keep it stay up, you can use a rubber band. So you place a rubber band like that, that will hold these two pieces up. So I can place a machine from the top easily. Now I'm going to line up this two spot to the holes on the back of the machine. Here are the two holes and that's the back side. This is the front side. So we will lift up the machine and align the holes. Now it's in place. We just need to screw it back tighter. Now I tighten the set screw. Everything should be ready. Place this down. Now the machine is very sturdy. You can place it under the desk. Just like that. And we can just cut off the rubber band. We don't need it anymore. So that's how you install and uninstall the Singer Vintage Sewing Machine. And the next I want to show you how I polish the cabinet. This cabinet is still in pretty good shape. But if you look closely, there are still some spots that's different color and there will be a few marks, a few things. You can still see some imperfections, especially on the top. The color is much lighter than the front. So after some research, I found some product I can use. And I remember I have a very similar product to polish the wood floor. It gives a little bit of shiny surface and make the imperfection less visible. So that's how I do it. And I have the link in the description box of the product if you're interested. Some products also have a little stain so you can pick a color. So basically it kind of give it a little polish, a little finish. So it's a little bit more waterproof or water resistant. And it also makes the surface more even and it doesn't look like uh, it's just come out of garage. So I'm happy with the result. It's not 100% perfect, but I like the imperfection. It looked a little bit old with some history or stories. If it's in really bad shape, you can always sand it down and paint it and finish it in a new color but I prefer the natural way. And I do like my vintage Singer sewing machine. Even though you only sew straight stitch, it's very powerful, very solid. It doesn't skip stitch easily. The downside is that it's very heavy. So it's nice to have a cabinet so I can put away everything when I don't need it and use it as a table. Thank you so much for watching today and hope you like it. See you next week.